Good afternoon and welcome to Conversations on Showing Up for Kids. My name is Tim Markle. I'm director of the Southern Regional Center for Children and Youth with Special Health Care Needs. We cover 14 counties in Southern and Southwest Wisconsin, but darn it all, we just know people from all across Wisconsin and we've got people that join us from all across Wisconsin and it's just so much fun because we try to have a space where we talk about things that matter to families who have children with special health care needs or disabilities. Um, and today is one of those times where I'm really excited that we get to talk to Leslie Thede, um, if I pronounced the last name right, I totally forgot. So Leslie Thede, um, who is with Respite Care Association of Wisconsin. And so I know respite care is always a question that's out there. And I found out earlier today that, not today, earlier this year that they have this thing called emergency funds, which I knew nothing about. And so I'm like, okay, you guys need to talk about that. I mean, to talk about respite. So Leslie, I'm going to turn it over to you, let you um, share your screen with um, with whatever you have, and then to introduce yourself much further than I, I just fumbled my way through. So thank you so that much. That was fantastic. Me. Don't worry. <laughs> so I'm Leslie, and I am very open to questions. Stop me if I'm talking too fast. You know, anything you want to say, just hop in. I also have this Bernese Mountain Dog with me next to me. So if you hear some scratching, which is what's happening now, um, just try to ignore. Okay, <clears throat> so what is respite? And I, I didn't do a, a PowerPoint um, only because I think sometimes that takes away from, I, I like to make everything perfect and in line and what it looks like is more important to me than what's actually in there. So. I'm just going to talk and I hope that's okay. Um, what is respite care? Respite care is a break for a primary caregiver. So whether you're caring for your child or your adult um, child or your parent, it doesn't matter to us, just that you're, you're caring for someone. And respite care would be a break for that person. So if I'm caring for my child with severe anxiety um, and I need a break from that, I might have my sister come and care for my son while I go and go to the grocery store or take a nap or anything at all. Respite can be anything at all. Whatever whatever I need to recharge my batteries, that's what respite is. So whether whether it's me um, you know, going to a class or it, it, it really, it, it matters not at all. It's just that, that you get the break, right? The primary caregiver gets the break. So how do we aid in respite care? We are Respite Care Association of Wisconsin. And we serve all of Wisconsin, all 72 counties, 11 tribes. And we are happy to help in any way possible. So we have a phone number and that phone number gets calls about all sorts of things. So whether it's respite related or not, we are an open door policy. So if you call me and say, I have this issue, it has nothing to do with respite care, but I don't know where to turn. Um, I'm happy to, to find someone that would be able to help you, to connect you with someone that, that can you know take some steps forward. So please use us as a resource. Uh, we are here to help. And um, I will provide at the end in the chat, I'll put my phone number and the email and all sorts of stuff in there just so you have it all. So we have um, a couple different ways we can help. We have grant programs, we have training opportunities, and we have a registry. So I'm going to start with the, the least exciting and go to the most exciting in my world. So I'm going to say, um, training, we have training pro providers that are people that are interested in becoming providers. We provide the training. We have a free training, 10 courses, um, all do at your own pace. And you, once those people have completed those, they can then put themselves on the registry. Okay. So they create this profile and I'll show you in a, in a minute here what that looks like. And it just has their information. It has um, a little bit about them, maybe a picture, maybe a resume attached, things like that. And so primary caregivers can go on there and search through this registry and say, oh, there is Helen and she provides care for children and she specializes in autism. That's what I need. I'm going to call Helen and see if she has space. Um, and then everything is done between the primary caregiver and, his, and um, the respite provider. So that means that we don't endorse any of these people. We don't do background checks, anything like that. So you would be responsible or the person who's who's using it would be responsible to interview and do all those, those um, make sure we're, we're checking all the boxes there. So that's the, the training and the registry piece that doesn't always um, mean everything or isn't, isn't as important, but that's you know something, a resource to have. We also have grant programs. This is where I get really excited because it's my world. Um, 
but we have what's called the caregiver respite grant program. That grant program provides five days of respite care in a 30 day period. You can reapply every 60 days. Now, if you're receiving um, things like CLTS or you're receiving other funding sources um, and you've exhausted those sources, or if you need flexibility, because let's say your county um, maybe works with a specific agency and that doesn't work for you and your schedule, or you need some flexibility, we are happy to help in that situation as well. So there's a listing of, of different criteria um, that we will go through that, that to make sure that you're eligible. If you're not eligible, that just means there's funding elsewhere. So if you come to us and you say, I need help with funding, and we say, ah, sorry, we can't help. It doesn't mean that there's nothing anywhere. It means that there's something somewhere else, um, and we just have to find it. So um, going back to the Caregiver Respite Grant Program, basically, you fill out an eligibility criteria form. A supporting documentation form is submitted by the county, so someone representing, and that's our way of making sure that there's not other funding elsewhere, that you're not missing out on long-term funding rather than just this short-term band-aid that we have. Um, and we go through the application after that. And that is just um, stating your, you know, the days you're looking for and all sorts of data information that help us get funding in the end. And then you're approved and you can use your five dates. And if you are hiring your family, friend, neighbor, um, sister, an individual, anyone like that, we will pay you directly. The check will be made out to the primary caregiver. And you will then in turn pay the respite provider. That's just kind of a way around us being the employer. If you hire an agency, we can pay them directly. So if you hire an agency, we can cut the check straight to them, kind of takes you out being the middleman. That is the caregiver respite grant program in a really tiny little nutshell. Does anyone have any questions? I talk fast. I am kind of a, a lot to handle. So anybody have any questions, I'm gonna pause. So I, I, my question is just a clarification, Leslie. So I want to make sure I understood this right. So with this with this program, um, the I I see this is why I'm so confused. I get to choose the person for those like five days um, because let's say that I do have CLTS, but they only pay certain people or companies. They have rules around who's allowed to come into my house for respite right now do i get to set my own rules for the respite care association of wisconsin care respite the, the grant that it can literally be you know i just i need it i need this night off and i trust my neighbor she comes over she plays with my kids she understands my kids but she hasn't gone through being certified or whatever with the state can I, can I use this grant to pay her? Yes, you can. This is what is beautiful to me about this grant is that um, you can, you, we have no preference on who you hire. You're, you're the professional in the situation, right? You're running this everyday life. And if you trust your neighbor to come over and care for your child, then we trust your neighbor. So um, you need to, you know, that, that's absolutely what this is here for. The other thing I'm going to just jump to while, while we're talking about this is the emergency portion of it. So let's say, like you mentioned, you're, you just need a break, right? You're at your, your wit's end. Or let's say you get a phone call and you have a family member that passed away and you need to attend a funeral. Or you have you broke your leg slipping on the ice yesterday. Anything at all. You have an, an emergency and you don't know what, like, we don't know what to do. We don't have a provider. We don't have funding. We don't have anything. We have, we're working on creating um, a smooth process on how that can look. So right now we have the funding. So we have an, a Microsoft form document right now that we have the link to that you can just submit a form and say, I'm having an emergency. It says, what's your emergency? It says, I need help um, this time to this time. Or it says, I don't even know what I need, right? I just, I'm having this crisis and I don't know what I need, but I need something. Um, then you can submit that form. We will have someone reach out. Now we are a four person staff and we cover all 72 counties. So this is not something that if you submit at two in the morning, we're going to be back to you at 2.30. Um, so, you know, we, if we have, we need to have this understanding that if it is a, an emergency, a medical emergency or a health, you know, mental health crisis that we call the appropriate places, right? So 911, we need to call, we need to call crisis hotlines if we're in those places. But if you're having an emergency of, I need to go to this funeral tomorrow, 
and, or in three days, and I have no one to care for my child or whatever the case may be, then this is the kind of emergency that we are able to help with. So we could provide funding, first of all, to fund that respite care. So let's say you have a provider, you have a family friend neighbor that's gonna come and help out, we can provide the funding to that. Let's say you don't have a provider. Let's say you're like, I, you know, this is a family, a family funeral and all of my providers, all of my, my respite people are my family, right? What am I going to do? Um, then we have the registry and that can be helpful, but we needed a little bit of a bump to this. So what we've done is created this emergency system where you can, sub, like a caregiver, a primary caregiver, a parent can submit a posting basically saying, here's what I need. This is where I'm at. This is my county. Um, this is what I'm willing to pay even, or this is, you know, kind of any, any sort of information that you want to put in there. There's a little, you know, box for other, if you just need a, a little like snip of, hey, this is what I'm going through. But basically it just lists what your needs are. And then you post it to this, it's what's called respite connections. And respite connections is going to be open to any kind of situation, not even emergencies. If you just need a provider you're looking for, you can post to respite connections. In emergency situations, However, we are going to take that post and we're going to send it to our providers that are listed for covering those counties that you listed. So if I say I'm in Milwaukee County and I need a provider, then we're going to send that post to all of our providers that say they serve Milwaukee County. And we're going to say we have an emergency, we need help. Um, so this is a developing program. We are looking into to how we can better the program, how we can make things um, smoother for everyone involved. But basically what our goal is, is you, you can come to a one-stop shop. I need the funding, I need the provider, and you know I need someone to help me with, with all the things. And here's this little piece that we can kind of you know present with a little bow on it that, that can help. So that is kind of the emergency um, aspect of it. Any questions, comments, concerns there? I guess my one question or concern is, um, how are you going to not be overwhelmed? <laughs> That's a great question. Less? Because That's that a... just sounds like something that families that I have talked with could take advantage of. And I know, I know that there are families out there who have medically complex kids who the level of care their kids needs is more of a nursing level of care than a respite level of care. So I, I know that this is not going to be overly helpful for them. But for a lot of families, like like you said, if there's a something happening with the family, most of the people that you trust may not be there. So is there, you know, being able to reach out to an organization and say, okay, you trust these people. So I'm going to assume I trust these people and I really need some help. I mean, that just that just sounds like something families could use. Absolutely. And I think we, we are going to have to navigate how that looks as far as being overwhelmed and, and all of the things, but we've created these processes that hopefully keep things fairly streamlined. The funding for emergency care that we have, we feel very confident in right now. Um, we also have some funding for underserved populations. So if we have people with um, low income, uh, risk for abuse and neglect, Black families, Asian families, things like that, then we have additional funding for that as well that, you know, could cover emergency or, you know, so we, we our funding sources kind of blend. And that's where we're, I'm not very concerned in, in that respect of being overwhelmed with like, oh no, we're going to run out of funds to help people. But the, the oh no, we're going to run out of, um, of, you know, minutes in the day is a concern. So, you know, we tried to streamline the processes and how that looks. And we have a, a data system and it's called Gnosis. And it's basically um, where we run all of our, all of our things through. So that's what I'm going to do right now is just hop on to share my screen. And I'm going to try not to make anyone sick while I do so. We all appreciate that. But <laughs> we've now been living part of our lives in Zoom land. And so I, I think we have some immunity built up. <laughs> good, um, good. To, to Zoom features of, of sharing screens and stuff. So we should be okay. Okay. So here is out in... Let me know if at any time you can't see what I'm doing or if there's questions, just let me know. I'm happy to kind of go through this however you need. But this is our um, webpage, our home webpage, okay? And when I talked about our programs, here's where you're gonna find that. Here's where you're gonna find the emergency respite, the training courses, the grant programs we have in the registry. 
So I'm just going to go through the registry um, briefly so you can kind of see what that is because that won't take us too long. We're going to use this as someone who has it, um, someone they're caring for, and that's how we're going to go about this. So I need to find a provider, okay? And this just talks about what the, the registry is. This just is telling us that, you know, we, we don't do the background checks. We don't check references, anything like that. So let's say I'm in, um, and I'm just going to do one that I'm familiar with, Winnebago County. And I'm looking for a provider that works with children. And I'm looking for in-home care. And I'm going to click search. All of these blue bars listed are either individuals or agencies that provide care for children in Winnebago County and provide in-home respite care. If I click on it, it's going to expand. So this is Amanda, and Amanda lists her email as her way of communication. And here's kind of what, she, you know, here's her experience. This is kind of what a profile looks like. Here's the counties she provides care for, um, the hours she's willing to work any hours as of right now. So then you can scroll through and see, hmm, oh, this one looks, I have two autistic children, and maybe that makes me feel a little safer that this is also um, a parent of someone who's going through similar things that I am. Here are some of the, the education pieces that I have. And if I want to reach out to this person, here's their email. I can just click on it and it's going to pop up a new screen and, and open an email for me. This is the registry, okay? Any questions there? Otherwise, I'm just going to keep rolling. Okay, I'm going to keep rolling. This is the caregiver. So here's our grant page. And we've only gotten this far <laughs> in the grants because I just get so excited about the Caregiver Respite Grant Program. So we're going to start with that and hopefully have time for one other grant program. But this is what the page, oops, sorry, I get a little excited. This is what the page looks like, okay? Here are the steps. The step one is completing the eligibility criteria form and the county completing the supporting documentation form. Step two is going to be that um, you're going to get the link to the application and you're going to complete the application once you're approved and after the, the respite is complete, then you will complete the grant report. Okay, and that's kind of how it rolls. You're gonna scroll down, here are the eligibility criteria. Um, so I've applied and I'm on a wait list. So this, as we know, happens, um, even though we don't have wait lists in some programs, we still end up waiting, right? Because they don't, you know, any, any, any sort of thing. That's just how life is, right? And, um, or if we've been denied, let's say I'm not um, financially eligible or, you know, anything like that. If I've been denied services, I would be eligible for this program. If I have exhausted my funds from these programs, I could be eligible for RCAW's programs. If I need flexibility, so this is what we were talking about before. Let's say um, I'm working through CLTS and they only you know, service through contracted um, providers or agencies, and that just doesn't work for my schedule or my, um, my feeling of, of being safe with this, this situation. All right, then we can help. Or if you've applied and you're ineligible for services. And it has not applied just means that we know we wouldn't be eligible. So if, you know, I, I know that um, in some cases the, the financial requirements are a little different and I know I'm going to be above assets, um, we don't require that you apply because sometimes that takes a very long time, um, but we just need a documentation that you are ineligible. So here is where you would click to get started on the form. And I'm not going to go into that because it's going to take us to a page that says, enter your email, make an account. And that's kind of where you will start, you know, creating this, this um, profile that you have with us. This documentation form is what the, um, the county is going to complete. And they can click here, or you're going to be sent an automated email that you can forward to them. They can reach out to us and say, we don't know what to do, or we've never heard of this. We're a little nervous about completing it. We've had all sorts of different things um, come to us that say, you know, we, we just, we don't know, right? This is unfamiliar to us. We need more information. And we're happy to, to provide that information and kind of walk through counties um, or walk through the steps with the counties or with individuals, whatever the, like, the case may be. After these two steps are complete, you receive an automated email that has the link to the application in it. Okay, so that is how that looks. And then if we go back to this grant page. I'm going to take you through one other grant before we go. Oh, I have so much to show you. I'm sorry. Okay. This is our supplemental respite grant program. This grant program allows for $250. And right now you can apply every 60 days. 
this gets exciting for families in CLTS because sometimes we don't have um, room for, for kind of movement of other, other responsibilities on our plate of being a caregiver that we don't always think about, right? So let's say that I need someone to come in and um, do snow removal. Let's say that I can't go outside by myself because I need to be a primary caregiver in the house. Um, and, you know, I need someone to come and take the snow out of my driveway. Then we can provide $250 for that. Uh, we do that process very similar to what we just talked about in the CRGP, the Caregiver Respite Grant Program. It's a very similar process to um, this process. So it's the same thing with the eligibility criteria form, supporting documentation form. All of the eligibility criteria is the same. Um, it's just what you can use this funding for. So I believe, and there's where all of the, the eligibility are the same there. Um, oh, we also have housekeeping duties. We could go there. We could do technology. We can provide. If let's say you need, um, you want to attend a support group or something like that, and it's only virtual would work for you because you can't attend because you don't have respite care or whatever the case may be. Um, we can provide two hundred and fifty dollars of funding to get you in iPad or something like that that you are going to connect to. You know, as long as you can prove to us that that this is something you needed, you decrease your isolation. Isolation. <laughs> and increase your socialization um, and, and get some respite, then, then that would be appropriate. Any questions? Because I kind of um, jumped around on this one. Any, I'm going to stop sharing for a second, just so in case anyone I want to well, see. Just, just before you, oh, shoot, just before you oh, start Oh, sorry. Sharing. No, I can mm. hop right back no, in. If you hop right back in, could you just walk over the emergency respite care program too? Someone had a question about whether, because you had mentioned it's a developing program. So is, are those links live for emergency care? So I'm going to hop still right back in. Up. And you tell me if, if you follow my pages, sometimes I get a mm -hmm. little. No, so far that's good. Yep. Did we jump? Okay. We did. Perfect. So here is the emergency respite form. So right as of right this second, what's live is the funding. Okay. So you would come in here and say, Here's, you know, here's my name, my email address, my phone number, the county in which I reside. One of these situations applies to me, or maybe it's a totally different emergency situation, and you can just explain that to us here briefly. And then here is what, what situation best describes you. So I, I need the funding, or I need the provider, or I need both, or really I'm not sure, you know, which end is up at this point. The age of the care recipient, anything else helpful you think that we would want to know? And then depending on circumstances, we might be able to only um, reply via email. So we should, you know, keep email communication is very important to us because we are a staff of four. Um, it's, the, it's the quickest way we can, we can help people is, is by email. And you'll submit this, we will get it, and um, we will analyze the situation. So as of right this second, people complete that form, it comes back to us, and we just go with communication. We email, we call, we text, we say, this is, you know, help us understand what you need from us. And we go from there. We can provide the funding. We can reach out to people in our network and find out. We can send a mass email to all of our providers at this point. By the end of this week or next week, now this is kind of um, the, the coming portion of it, but then we will be able to, to have this posting up, right? So you'll be able to post your emergency need. You'll be able to post even just a regular need. Let's say I just need someone on Saturdays from 10 to 3. Um, and I'm looking for respite at this time, then you can post that as well. But the emergency portion and the, the posting portion is coming very soon um, within within the next week for certain. So that, that's what, what emergency looks like for us right this minute. Any, any thoughts or questions? No, I think that answered the question that was in the chat. Wonderful. Perfect. Um, for the supplemental yes. um, grant program, that 250, What's the time limitation on that? Is that once a year? You can reapply every 60 days okay. at this point. So all of our grants are very fluid. We've only had to close them down for a very short time once um, since I've been here for, the, I think, three years now that, that they only had to shut it down once. But um, we it's it's flowing as far as if we're getting in a large influx of, of applicants, then you know we're gonna might we might have to, to space that out a little bit. But right now um, we have the funding for it and we have the capacity to take it on. So it's every 60 days people can reapply um, and, and get the $250. Same thing goes for the caregiver respite grant program. Every, every 60 days they can reapply for another five days of respite. 
And I'm assuming if anybody is, is watching this or the people that are live right now, um, knowing that this is a high level overview um, and also knowing the people that, that work for Respite Care Association Wisconsin, they can call or email if, they, if they're not sure if this is a situation where you would be able to help, you're more than happy to talk to them about what their situation is. And you, if you can help them, you're gonna help them. If not, you're gonna help them maybe find other resources. Or I know that you work closely also with the um, Children's Regional Centers, the Regional Centers for Children and Youth with Special Health Care Needs to make sure families are accessing everything that, that is in, available to them in the support system. Mm -hmm. So I know you guys, you guys are open to someone saying, okay, this is, this is a situation. This is my kid. This is what I'm, I'm looking at possibly needing. Can yeah. you? Exactly. And that's the, the, the beautiful thing about this organization is that you can, you know, call us and say, Hey, none of that cookie cutter stuff that you said was going to be the case is actually fitting. Our situation is just like a little different or even like a lot different. That's okay. Um, we're more than happy to, to talk through those situations and to, to navigate with you, to advocate for you. Um, what, what can we do to help? How can we, and, and if we can't do anything to help, like Tim said, we're gonna find somebody or some sort of resource that, that can, um, that can give you some support. And I, I know this isn't your area, but I know you can at least mention, um, because one of the things that people talk all the time about is, you know, where do I find these respite people? So it, it's one thing to, have someone come in for a day or five days, you know, yeah. every couple of months. But there's also a time where you're just like, you know what, I really could use every Tuesday night off to go do something or to have a date night. And supposedly, because of the fact that I'm Medicaid and I am approved for the waiver of Medicaid, they'll pay for respite. But how do I train those people oh. to come into my house? And I know you guys have some excellent training on how to train and retain respite care workers. We do. We have um, the best training and development specialist in the land, Val, Val Madsen. She's wonderful. True. And <laughs> she um, does some great work. So she has training courses on how to train, hire, and retain a respite care provider for your, for your family. She has resources in there, like interview questions. She has, you know, specific scenario questions. The, the course is, is designed so that you don't necessarily have to take the course and sit down from one until three and just do the course, right? Because we don't have time for that sometimes. You can enroll in the course and you can find a document that says tips and tricks. You can find the document that says interview questions. Um, and you can just print those PDFs if that's what's helpful for you. You can, you know, run through the, the training if, if you if that's helpful for you. However, we you know we can help, we want to help. And if there's things where you say, you know what would be helpful if I knew how to X, Y, or Z, right? If I knew how to do this specific thing in regards mm -hmm. to a, a provider, that would be helpful for us. Um Val is I'm I'm serious. I, I will toot her horn all day long. She is genius and she can come up with things like that. She will come up with trainings that help. So if, if you have things where you're like, I really wish, you know, this is helpful, but, or this is helpful, and we're happy to, to fill in the rest of that gap as well. I, of course, am looking for the survey link. So if you want to continue just talking, that'd be fantastic, Leslie. Oh, absolutely. I can, I can talk all day. So, <laughs> so the other, let's see, what else can I can I share with you about, about our programs? That is very exciting. And oh, we have a summit coming up that I can tell you about. Oh. Um, yes, we have, we provide, or we run a summit every year. The last year was in Appleton. The year before was in Stevens Point. This year, we're going to Milwaukee. Um, and if you don't have a, um, if you're not signed up to get on our list of emails and things like that, please reach out. I know Tim threw in the chat um, email and some contact information for us, I believe at the beginning, yes, perfect. Um, please reach out and just say, I'm not on your email list, add me or anything like that. I'm happy to, to get you listed and make sure you're receiving all of our updates um, and changes. And we're constantly trying to, to be better and, and help more. So um, please, please keep in contact with us and tell us what you need from us and how we can, how we can help you. Where and when is the conference? 
I was told you I was going to tell you about it, and then I didn't tell you about you it. Yeah, and I'm looking through your calendar and going, where, what is she talking about? No, okay. The and it hasn't. I believe just the save the date is going out, and okay. it is. Um, give me one second here. June twelfth. So June twelfth is going to be the summit. It's going to be in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, um, and it's going to be a one day, one Great. day thing. All right. And if you are on the um, Southern Regional Center Children Youth with Special Health Care Needs Resource Roundup. Um, as soon as that hits the uh, ARCA newsletter that then comes to me, then it will hit the resource roundup and will be added to our list of events as, as well. Um, any questions from uh, people that are listening right now? Just giving people a second to unmute or to put something in the chat. I did throw in a survey link. It's very helpful to us if you could fill out a feedback survey. Um, and also, I, okay, so I I know both people that are, I, I know the people that are in the call. So it's like, just like one of them just responded, nope, thank you. It's like, yeah, perfect, exactly. Let's just talk, okay, that's great. So um, thank you so much, Leslie. Um, I appreciate you being here. Appreciate all that you're doing. I've just in awe of the six years that I've been working with Southern Regional Center at how Respite Care Association Wisconsin has grown. That you guys are doing more things, that you are being more helpful. And I'm so hopeful that with the leadership is we will find a way to help parents, help families to take that break they need to be able to breathe and to be able to re-engage. Because um, it's not about running away, it's about retreating to re-engage. Um, and we all need to re be refilled every so often. So thank you for helping provide that. Thank you, Tim. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Anyone who has anything, please feel free to reach out. I'm happy to, to talk with you about specific situations. All right. And we'll do our best to, I'll, I'll throw together just a short resource sheet and then um, get this recording out to everybody. So thank you again, Leslie. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.